Hello and welcome to the Cofinity of One to Watch podcast, which showcases local people, companies, and the things that they create. Cambridge is the heart of innovation and entrepreneurship in the UK, and we hope to celebrate the ones to watch in the greater Cambridgeshire area. Follow the hashtag one to watch across social media and join in the discussion at cofinitive.com forward slash one to watch. Hi there, my name is Dan. I'll be hosting the show today. And in this episode of the One to Watch podcast, we'll be talking to a company, Sidar Medical. I'm here with Rob Haig. So Rob, could you just uh, introduce yourself to our listeners and just tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Rob Haig. I'm the CTO at Sidar Medical. I've been with the company for uh, since about 2014. Before that, I was working in a completely different industry um, in electronics design automation. How did you get here? What's your journey been? Where did so, it start? Well, again, a small startup. We were acquired by a large company. Tried that for a few years. Um, but I realised that I actually enjoyed being in a small company, a startup. Um, so I looked around and found Sider Medical. At that point, there were only um, five people, I think. And we kind of uh, just started to turn the very promising technology into a, a, pro- a commercial product that can be rolled out to hospitals across the world. Oh, that's fantastic. So could you just tell me a little bit more about your sort of flagship product, your sort of hero product? What's the core sort of offering for you guys? So our um, core product is called Sidar EV, it stands for endovascular. It's a system to provide overlays during endovascular surgical procedures. Over the last, well, probably 20 years, there's been an increase in the use of endovascular procedures, so keyhole surgery. Uh, what this um, involves is putting a device um, into an, a very small incision in your, um, in your leg, um, put a device into the femoral artery, and that is what goes um, up to the um, uh, site of the aneurysm. And then they can unfurl this device, kind of almost like an umbrella. Um, but it's a, a stenograph, it's a tube with a, a wire frame um, and a sort of a fabric, uh, fabric graft. What this does is it kind of expands into the disease part, takes the pressure off the aneurysm, which the aneurysm is just a swelling um, in the blood vessel. So it kind of bridges that, takes the pressure off, and means the aneurysm isn't going to burst, um, which is what you're, what you're trying to prevent. So the, the big difference is this is all done with far less stay in hospital, far less risk to um, the patient. Okay, so it's, in terms of innovation then, it sounds like you're really sort of driving this, this part of the industry forward, making everything a lot easier and more accessible absolutely yes. um, and it sounds like as well you know we talk about challenges in the one to watch and um how uh, we, we we like to try and identify real world problems and then people companies or things who are finding sort of innovative solutions for those problems so the, the, there's a couple of layers there i think of the challenges it's the it's the you know the, the patience The patients are going to have access to a really efficient process now, I think, if I'm understanding correctly. But also the surgeons in the room have got got access to a really efficient tool to be able to do their job quicker and better, it sounds like, Um, which is incredibly impressive. Um, And another sort of element of a one to watch and what we think makes a one to watch is is the influence. So, So how do you feel like you're influencing the rest of the industry um, uh, and particularly the, the Cambridge areas as, as well. What kind of influence do you think you're having on the wider industry at the moment? I think we are just generally increasing the um, increasing the awareness of these techniques in the kind of surgical community, and in particular, um, and that it's, we're making them more widely accessible. Um, at the moment, it's a fairly specialised um, specialised thing. There's a, a lot of clinicians who swear by it, who are really sort of major. Sort of proponents of using overlays to reduce x-rays, reduce contrast. Um, the other thing it reduces operation time as well, um, which is actually a, bit, a, a big factor for the um, hospitals because that means they can schedule the room efficiently. They don't have to say, okay, so this procedure is meant to take three hours, but it might take eight if, if they get lost and something goes, yeah, they can't see where, they, where they're going, which is a risk without proper guidance. So if you've got good guidance, there's, far, there's not only your, your procedure time comes down a bit, but your um, devi- standard deviation of the procedure time comes down a lot because you can see, because you can see what you're doing better. We're making these techniques more widely available, um, and we've got a there's a, uh, a surgeon we work with at the Royal Free um, called Dr. Mastracci. She um, is she's a big proponent of and that's a kind of radiation dose which I've mentioned. 
in terms of clinicians um, being aware of the radiation they're exposed to during these procedures and also making these ovoids available to everyone. Um, so the two factors, the ease of use and the cost um, are both big factors. Cost, obviously, if you can't afford your fixed X-ray system, you're not going to get overlays without cyber Sure, operation. sure. And uh, but the, even if you have that, there are a lot of cases where, where um, you will have this, this system, but you won't use it for a lot of cases because it's just too um, complicated. Whereas um, with cyber, because it's so straightforward, it doesn't really require any change to work or any, um, any extra effort during the procedure. So it sounds like the SIDAR solution then is, is a very simple um, with sort of hidden complexities. Precisely, yeah. So um, we want to make um, the, the, what the end user sees is right. very simple. Right. Um, but, but it seems like an incredibly robust system as well. Like, um, yeah, it has, it, has, it has to be obviously for a, um, for, for, to be used in these, the case you can't, you can't risk showing a, a wrong answer. So one of, one of Graham's um, uh, sort of key emphasis when he was developing the original technology is the verification side. Because getting, getting a solution um, is one thing. But there's a lot of a lot in sort of behind the scenes. Um, every time you do that five second registration, a significant portion of that is checking that the answer you've come up with is actually correct and is reliable enough to present. That's interesting to me. An interesting so, point, I think, because the what they're seeing is very clear and concise. Yeah. And the how they're seeing it is it doesn't need to be considered in the room. You exactly. guys take care of that complexity, yeah. it seems, um, which is fascinating. And you described a, a, a certain. Uh, behavioural uh, process there where people aren't using the old system mm. because it wasn't uh, useful enough in all instances and it's sort of extending yeah. the process whereas your offering seems to be speeding things up whilst yeah. keeping it incredibly accurate. And, uh, the key, the key, key attitude that we have is usability in that you literally listen to and again this is it's another communication as you say it's, it's automatic now lots, lots of Things that describe as automatic. It's like, okay, so it's sort of like, what do I have to do to get registration? Like, no, nothing. It's automatic. Um, and once people get it, they come see it. It's like, okay, so who's doing that? So, oh, no one's like, that's just you turn it on. That happens. And I'm like, well, okay, well, I can see that. Um, whereas is you don't have to have a radiographer operating the system and fiddling with joysticks and correcting for things. It's just, it's just there. You turn it on, and it works. Fantastic. And can we just touch on the sort of viability of a, a product like that and how uh, the viability might be a different discussion in the UK versus the US? So, um, so that's an interesting one. So obviously we're a UK company. We started off in the NHS. And in fact, a, a lot of our early funding came from um, the Guns and Thomas's um, Trust and the charity that um, Guns and Thomas has run. But we're also operating the, in the US. Um, and they're... So fundamentally, the operation is the same. The, the, what, what you're actually doing is, uh, it's the same operation. People's, um, people's aneurysms don't differ in the US and the UK. They're the same all over the world. But um, in terms of selling into hospitals, it's obviously a very, some very different considerations. So um, in the NHS, so we're still selling, we're not, we're not kind of, uh, at least not yet, selling into the NHS as a whole. The, so the, the other aspect we've got, because um, we, we, um, we run the, to get the computing capacity we need, we run in the cloud, um, which if you're dealing with um, medical procedures, obviously that brings in big questions about patient data. And the NHS, only Europe in general compared to the US, but in the NHS um, in particular is obviously very concerned about privacy, GDPR has just come in. Um, so we have to make sure we're 100% on top of that and we have, we've baked in from the start an architecture which separates off the patient as we kind of minimise the amount of patient data we hold because ultimately we don't actually want to be holding patient data. Fantastic. I mean, the final sort of heading that we should probably explore as part of the One to Watch podcast in this episode is memorability. Um, and, you know, what's going to make you stand out from the competition in five years, 10 years, you know, down the line, like why are we gonna remember sidearm medical, do you think? Like what are you working on now that's gonna be important for the future? One thing, one first we claim is we're the first people to actually deliver high performance cloud computing into the operating room for interventions. So um, we're not aware of certainly anyone who's done that earlier and I'm 
very few people doing that now. Incredible. So um, that is, I think, a, a big milestone. Um, and we're just starting to see the, the, the real fruits of that. And hopefully, what people, people remember is um, we're the company that got um, overlays, far more wide views, and, and got them to be the standard of care. Fantastic. Okay. It's been fascinating to talk to you today, Rob. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Cofinitive One to Watch podcast. Do keep an eye on the hashtag One to Watch across social media. For more information regarding the company, person or thing mentioned in this episode, please visit cofinitive.com forward slash one to watch, where we'll be showcasing innovation and entrepreneurship every week. You can submit your own company, person or thing to be considered as a one to watch. And in true Cambridge spirit, you can also nominate others too. Please do subscribe or check back regularly for new episodes and join the discussion at cofinitive.com.